This is MTG Burgeoning, and in this video we are going to update and upgrade our Cathrol Aspect Warper EDH deck. Thank you for joining us for another installment of the Up and Up series. Today we are updating and upgrading Cathrol Aspect Warper. Before we start wheeling and dealing, though, I should take a moment to let you know that down in the description of this video, you can click the link to this deck's deck tech. You can click the link to this deck's deck list, and it's always updated to the moment. And you can also click the link to this build's video primer series. We have spent a lot of time and focus recently on Cathrol. First, in this series of up and up installments, we looked to improve the mana base. Then we improved our card advantage, and here we are on the outside of finally getting to the point where we're going to even out those keyword counters. Let's take a look to see how we've been doing so far. And as you can see, with our nice little ends being trample and flying, our two best evasive abilities, we're really evening out all of the keywords in between. We got a nice little bell curve working. Cathrol is going to enjoy that very, very much. But we're not done yet. We're here again. We're going to smooth those numbers out a little bit more. We're going to throw four more creatures into the 99, which means that four more creatures are on the way out. Let's get it done, and let's make Cathril our nightmare insect. Let's make this a dream scenario. All right, the first creature going into this to the 99 of this video, we have the Sylvan Karyatid. We've got an 03 plant for one in one green mana. It has Defender, which is not one of the keywords we're looking for, but oh, does it have that hex proof. Sweet, sweet hex proof. We don't get that these days in Magic. All we get are different forms of ward. Well, Cathro don't do no ward, so we want that hex proof, baby. And as an additional bonus to help fix our mana and accelerate us as well, we can tap Sylvan Karyatid to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. We're never going to worry about attacking with this plant. It's there for its hexproof in the graveyard, or it's there for its mana production on our side of the battlefield. With this plant going in and bringing its hexproof keyword with it, it's going to replace... Skullbriar the Walking Grave. Note that Skullbriar's name was absent from that list we just looked at over there on that spreadsheet, and that's because, well, none of his keyword counters can affect Cathrol. It only has haste, and Cathrol don't do no haste. So what we're looking at here is taking a creature with a very similar mana value, this one's black and green as opposed to Sylvan Karyatid's one and a green, and we're adding an oh-so-coveted hexproof mechanic, and then we're losing a hasty creature that gets a plus-one, plus-one counter whenever it deals combat damage to a player, and whenever it moves in between zones other than a player's hand or library, those counters stay on Skullbriar. If only those counters could stay on our commander instead. Skullbriar is a very nice and potentially threatening creature on the battlefield, but it's going to yield to the Karyatid here, because Cathrol said so. Creature number two going into this build, it is, ah uh, yes, Thalia and the Gitrog Monster. Here we have a 4-4 legendary human frog horror for one in Abzan colors. With it, it brings First Strike and Death Touch, a very, very nice combination for any creatures who will dare oppose blocking our fantastic commander. <laughs> if only we were done there, Thalia and the GT, I'm sorry, Thalia and the TGM, the Get Trog Monster, they're bringing a lot more than just a couple of keywords. When they're on our side of the battlefield, we may play an additional land on each of our turns, which will only help to accelerate our mana, of course, and creatures and non-basic lands our opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. And when Thalia and the Get Trog Monster attacks, we sacrifice a creature or land, and then we draw a card. 
for the ability to, for the purposes of getting all of their abilities to you know synergize with what we want to do, we may want to think about getting Thalia and the Gitrog monster onto our side of the battlefield before it's inevitably killed by one of our opponents, or we sacrifice it to itself and re and um, replace it with a card drawn. Then, with it being in our graveyard, we can reap the benefit of those first strike and death touch keywords. Cathril approves and accepts the Git. Trog monster and Thalia with arms wide open. I'm not sure it has arms, but maybe pinchers or legs or whatever it is that Nightmare Insects got going on. All right, with Thalia and the Gitrog monster going into the deck, it's going to replace the Questing Beast. Here, this is somewhat a little similar to what we were talking about with Skullbriar. It has that haste keyword, and we do wish Cathril could do... We do wish Cathro could do him some haste, but he just can't. So the Questing Beast was in here for its Vigilance and Death Touch. We keep the Death Touch swap, but we get rid of Vigilance and we add First Strike instead. Now the Questing Beast could do some damage out there, particularly if our opponents have any Planeswalkers on their sides of the battlefield. I don't know about your playgroup, but it definitely, you know, the popularity of Planeswalkers seem to vacillate in mine, and right now it's on a downtrend. So this seems like a good time to take out the Questing Beast to put in a different 4-4, and you'll also note that the mana values of these cards are similar at 4 mana. Granted, Questing Beast is 2 and 2 green, while the Thalia and the Gitrog Monster are 1 and Abzan colors instead. This is going to be a better swap overall, and I look forward to the time that the Thali and Gitrog monster get themselves out onto our side of the battlefield. All right, we're down to our last two creatures. Oh, you know what's coming at number four. The spoiler is out. If you know what the backside, the grand evolution, you know what creature's coming in at the four slot. But before we get to number four, we can't ignore creature number three. That is Oketra the True. This was a card I had coveted for many, many moons, always knowing it would have a fantastic place in this Cathro build, and finally a copy of it became available, and it's going to get slam dunked right into the 99 of this deck. Here is Oketra. It's a, she is a 3-6 god for 3 and 1 white mana. She has double strike and indestructible two of the keywords that we were so hoping to improve upon at the onset of this series of up and up installments oketra the true cannot attack or block unless we control at least three other creatures and that's not that big of a deal because we probably would prefer oketra to be in the graveyard anyways in the long game, however, if she is on our side of the battlefield, we could jam three and one white mana into her to create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with Vigilance. Not the greatest use of our mana, but still a late game mana sink nonetheless. But make no mistake about it, Oketra is being added to this build because of those two fabulous keyword abilities. With Oketra going in... She is knocking out, I'm pretty sure it's a she. I want to make sure that I'm not overstepping my bound. Yeah, we're going to roll with she. You can correct me in the comment section. Light me up if I'm wrong. But we're going to roll with she for Oketra. Oketra is going to replace Weathered Sentinels. Here is a wall with Defender. Of course, we're glad that Oket we're glad that um, Cathril can't get Defender counters put onto him. It's a 2-5 with Defender, Vigilance, Reach, and Trample for three generic mana. Weathered Sentinels could attack players who attacked us during our turn. I'm sorry, during their turn. La oh, boy. That was a train wreck. Let's try it again. Weathered Sentinels can attack players who attacked us during their last turn as though it didn't have Defender. And whenever it attacks, it got plus three, plus three, and gains Indestructible until end of turn. So if we were able to send this into combat, it's a 5-8 Indestructible Vigilance Reach Trample. That is amazing for just three mana. However, those keyword abilities of Vigilance and Reach are, you know, not as important as the Trample, of course, and we are losing that Trample, although we do have a very high number of other Tramplers in the build. What we are looking for here is trying to jam in as many of those Double Strike Indestructible Hexproof counters so that we can even out the 
in between bookends of the flying and the trample. In so doing, we got to make a couple of tough decisions by getting rid of weathered sentinels. This is one of my favorite cards in this build, but if we want to reach our goal as at least at least as of right now, we got to make some tough decisions and well, right now the sentinels are out and Oketra is in. That brings us to the last card of this video, and if you know what the backside is, then you know what the front side is. And the last creature going into this build for this video, the one and only Vorinclex. There we go. We got Vorinclexes in. It's a 6-6 six, six trample with reach for two and two green mana. One Vorinclex ETBs. We search our library for two forest cards, reveal them, and put them into our hand. Would have been amazing if those bad boys went onto the battlefield, but that might have made this OP card even more pushed. We can pay 6 and 2 green mana to exile Vorinclex and then return it to the battlefield transformed under our control, but we can only do so as a sorcery. Of course, the 8 mana is not difficult, and when we do, we get the aforementioned Spoiled the Grand Evolution. And when we put the first lore counter onto the saga, we mill 10 cards... Cathrol approves, and then we put up to two creature cards from among the mill cards onto the battlefield. Note that it says put up to two creatures, so we could choose to put no creatures. When the second lore counter comes down, we distribute seven plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures we control. Hello, Voltron Commander. And when the third and final lore counter gets placed onto the saga until end of current until end of turn, not Kern, creatures we control gain pay one generic mana. This creature fights target creature we don't control. We then exile the Grand Evolution and return it to the battlefield back as Orin Flax as Orin Flax as Vorin Clax. And when Vorin Clax comes back into play, of course, we get two more forest cards, put those babies into our hand and we start the process all over again. There's a lot of fantastic utility to be gained by getting Vorinclex onto the battlefield and if for whatever reason it's in our graveyard the trample on the reach will please Cathrol very very much. All right, with Vorinclex going in, it's going to replace the final creature of this video, and that is Fauna Shaman. Now, here we have a creature with no keyword abilities, but it did, it did help out the overall theme of this build. She is a one... I'm sorry, she's a 2-2 two -two for one and a green mana. We would pay a green mana, tap her, discard a creature card, and then search our library for a creature card, reveal it, and put it into our hand. This helps to get creatures that we wanted into the graveyard from our hand right into the graveyard. However, we've got other ways in this build to ensure that we can get those creature cards from our hand into our graveyard. So if we're trying to build up the number of creatures with keyword abilities, you know, slightly weakening one part of the deck, the discarding into our graveyard portion, in order to see that comes through, well, then that's exactly what we're going to have to do. So for the moment, Fauna Shaman is out. Voring Klex is in. All right, there you have it, MTGBC. Let's take a look at those keyword counters now. Oh, look at that beautifulness. We got 11 and 9 on the bookends, and then every keyword counter in between is either a 4 or a 5. That is a great, great piece of work, particularly if we think about what we had prior to starting this. And let's just show what it was a few episodes of the Up and Up series ago. Look at that. It was up and down. It was a roller coaster. Boy, oh boy, we were all over the place. And we are oh so smooth now. Not only that, but we also added four additional overall creatures with those keyword abilities. We've really done a lot to make Cathril happy. And we know that Cathril is going to appreciate it. All right, there you have it, MTGBC. You let me know in the comment section below what you think of these changes and what potential changes may come on the horizon. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.